Good morning, Constantine. Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here um, virtually and uh, in spirit in Lisbon. I hope you can see my screen. Um, as Constantine said, we start every year traditionally by presenting the ADEX results. It's the market sizing of the European digital advertising industry. This is important because it provides an empirical, a quantifiable um, basis on which all the discussions that we have um, are going to take place. Growth in video, in social, um, issue of brand safety, supply chain transparency, and so forth. Many of the issues really become contextualized if you have the numbers. But indeed, 2019 looks extremely far away. And most people are wondering actually what's happening in 2020. Yet we shouldn't disregard the importance of looking at 2019 figures because you know, excavating this past is important to see what trends could we observe before the COVID hammer hit and what trends will likely going to continue and resurface, maybe even stronger, when COVID-19 um, fades away, hopefully. Also, the 2020 forecasts, assessments on how this crisis is impacting the industry, it, again, it needs data. So my 2020 forecasts, tentative assessments of the magnitude and also the impact long-term of the crisis are based on these 2019 numbers. So without further ado, let's dive in and um, understand where's the market right now, where's it going. You'll see lots of stats, um, but the slides will be, made, will be made available after this presentation. So uh, no, no need to take screenshots. Um, these will be distributed. Every year we look at Europe as something beyond the European Union. We look at Europe as 28 different, 28 distinct markets. And these markets that we cover round about um, 96, 97% of all ad spend in the broader set of the broader definition of Europe are captured here. We're working on adding additional markets year by year to provide an even more comprehensive picture. So let's dive into the markets. What's actually happening right now? Um, the overall market doubled um, more than doubled since 2013, up to a new market high for the digital ad industry of 64.8 billion euros of ad spend in 2019. This is, I should emphasize, gross ad spend. So this is after discounts, um, before agency commissions. So also, it would now another way of describing it would be it's the uh, publisher's net plus, of course, included um, the commission. So not the net net, but some countries call it net one. There are, by the way, as many definitions of gross and net as the countries across Europe. And this harmonization exercise is actually one of the critical things we do in this study. 60, 64.8 billion euros, more than doubling since 2013. That is the equivalent of the GDP of Luxembourg, Panama, um, um, or of Bulgaria. So a really sizable, um, really sizable market. And as you can see through all of those years, and this might become important uh, during our COVID-19 discussions, you see that during all those years, in particular, during the 2009 recession as well, you saw the market grow, the digital ad market. So we did not yet see, in all that history of ADEX that we have since 2006, we, did, we never saw, despite sometimes a volatile macroeconomic environment, we never saw a market contraction. And just mark the, um, mark the years 2008 and 2012, which we'll dive in later in more detail to understand the impact of the recession right now. If we place digital advertising in a broader context of overall paid media advertising, we can see something remarkable. Um, in the previous recession, the market recovered fairly slowly. It took around about um, three years to return to pre-market highs. And then, of course, the Eurozone crisis hit in 2012. But what you see since the first year of recovery, 2010, when all media rebounded, you saw that um, both in share and absolute terms, um, the broad bucket of other media, everything that's non-digital, actually declined. Some media in that continued to grow, in particular television as a brand advertising medium with high reach and also strong ties, of course, to digital, if you think about the notion of total video, combining television and um, uh, um, 
and OTT video. But the majority of the market really was driven by digitally native formats. Um, and now for the first time, actually, 2019, we can see that um, if we look at digital versus all other media, the digital now across the aggregate of the, of the European region is actually larger than all media combined. We saw this happening in some markets earlier. Sweden was the earliest in 2012. Other markets followed. But now on aggregate, um, digital is so large that it is, that it is the biggest single category and bigger than all the other aggregates of other media together. This double digit growth that we've seen in past years that led to this 64.8 billion euros um, was happening at a remarkably constant pace. So if we look at um, 2012 to 2019, there was only a 2.4 percentage point variation in growth, despite the rapid maturing of the digital ad market. Usually growth curves, of course, get slower as markets mature, but we had new formats come in, we had social come in, we had new transaction mechanisms come in, um, with programmatic, with brand spend moving to digital. All these things helped fuel this continuous double digit growth. And you can see that although there's a slight slowdown in growth compared to the last two years, 2019, if you look at the right side of this chart, you can see that in that period of broadly similar growth rates from 2012, 2019 is Kind of bang in the middle and isn't faring isn't faring too badly. Taking a long-term view of how our 28 markets have evolved, we can see that if we compare the size of the market of 2019 to the size of the market in 2060, four years ago, um, we can see that all markets grew. And if we look at a multiplier, we can see that some markets even doubled in size. And it's predominantly the emerging markets in Central and Eastern Europe, um, none, out, none out of uh, the top 10 that um, were growing the fastest, but everyone was growing and the European average is around at 1.4, 1.5. So massive increase of the market sizes. Now, if we dive into the structure of the markets, we can see a strong concentration of um, market size among just a few markets. The top 10 markets concentrate around 86% of growth and the top three markets over 55%. So you can really see how quickly things tail off and how important it is, as you, as you can see here, for smaller markets to potentially collaborate and share standards. And if we look, for instance, at the rise of programmatic in recent years, we can see often standards, transaction mechanisms, etc., were coined and established in larger markets, but then there was a leapfrogging effect for smaller markets. Um, although they are fragmented, they could adopt those standards and then refine them locally. And this is, if we look at the future growth rates, which you see in a second, we, we, we also see that despite many of the emerging markets being quite small, growth here is de facto the strongest. So first, if we zoom in, you can again see this massive um, long tail of markets if you move away from the uh, from the big ones. But if we zoom into this long tail, we can see also um, huge nuances between the markets. For instance, Poland being more than twice the size of Hungary and Slovakia being um, around two thirds the size of Serbia. So important to always compare markets with, um, um, with local benchmarks. As I mentioned earlier, some of the smallest markets are actually the fastest growing ones. In Serbia, the smallest market in our sample is the one that grew strongest and actually has been in the strongest growth period for the last three years or so. Remarkably, one of the most mature markets, which we see in a second, the UK, is also among the faster growing markets above the European average. I always like this chart because it uh, tells you so much information. So here we take a look back at 2018, just to understand how markets were distributed. The size of the bubble is the size of the market. And we have on the x-axis a sign of market maturity, digital ad spend per capita, how much is being spent per head on digital advertising. And then on the y-axis, you see the growth rate showing the dynamism of the market. And of course, things were fairly stretched out in 2018. Now, if we fast forward to 2019, the last year that we have data for, we see a much stronger clustering of the markets. First of all, we have the emerging markets cluster right here. Most markets grow above the European average, um, but they're all markets with a very low ad spend per capita. 
you have fairly concentrated and closer, closer bundled together than previously, although this is also partly due to the UK being nearly off the scale here, but fairly closely concentrated, a bulk of kind of mid-growth, um, mid-maturity um, European markets, um, or some of the biggest Western European markets, actually. The Nordics were some of the markets, some of the markets with the uh, largest broadband penetration, with um, a fairly late liberalization of the TV ad market, so less spend being locked up there, and a, a stronger legacy press industry, um, where spend moved fairly quickly. You can see them here um, occupying a separate, a distinct bucket. Switzerland stands out slightly. Switzerland is a large market, predominantly driven by search, but um, um, we saw some declines in, in, the, in the market in this year. Then the UK, despite its market maturity, um, is actually um, the leader, and it, it's uh, in a category of its own, driven by, bro by programmatic, driven by social, uh, driven by search, and um, a very strong focus on digital overall. Let's dive into the different formats of what actually, um, what, what formats actually fuel this growth. So we usually split things into three broad buckets, um, which we can then unravel um, further down in, the, in this presentation. So paid for search, search, classifieds and directories, um, and then the broad display bucket, which, in which everything goes from um, um, affiliate uh, banners, um, in-stream, outstream video, and so forth. And this is really an umbrella category in which you can see in social, um, an, an umbrella category in which you can see very, very different dynamics actually uh, taking place. Remarkably, we saw after a long dominance of search for the first time in 2018, and this is slightly revised data, some markets were restating the 2018 data. And for the first time in 2018, we saw the display aggregate overtaking search. Again, driven by social, by programmatic, um, by video. And display could start to ex expand on its lead in 2019. With that rise in, um, um, in display, um, we could also see a rise in mobile. Um, so for the first time now, we see um, total mobile for desktop as well as for search overtake desktop across markets. In some markets, this was already the case, but now we see this in 18 out of the 28 markets um, we're looking at, where mobile now is larger than desktop. If we look at all the markets and the growth trajectory here, um, we got um, our um, European average growth for display. We can see most markets, actually 21 of them, recorded double-digit growth and some even in the 20% in period. Remarkably, you see markets um, that are, um, again, in the mid, mid ad spend per capita, but very important economic markets in Europe and slightly underperforming the European average. If we look at classifieds and directories, we see an entirely different picture. So um, growth rates are far more stretched with ranging from over 70% in Serbia to actually a decline of a third in Romania. This is a market that is notoriously hard to survey as um, local standards and definitions vary hugely. And um, we have to rely closely to error check and to fine tune the surveys that we receive from members uh, from local IABs um, on company reports and filings. This sector, as you can kind of see with this kind of slight, with these differences in market size, in, in, in market growth, is a sector that is a huge opportunity for consolidation. And we're seeing some publishing groups in Europe um, buying up parts of that sector. So further consolidation will actually help the sector to grow um, further and more continuously. Um, and we expect it actually an uptake in the, in the next couple of years higher than the 4.9% European average we're currently recording. Paid for search, picture more similar to display, where again, we see the European, uh, again, where we see the CEE markets uh, in the lead. Again, remarkable, we see those markets which are mid capita um, um, important markets for Europe, mainly Western markets, actually underperforming in search, being fairly mature in search, um, focusing also on other performance based um, formats like programmatic display and so forth. But notably, the UK stands out and is actually um, growing search at a higher than the European average rate. 
Let's dive more deeply into video. Um, we can see the video contribution of display is growing um, year by year. We saw that since 2014 when we first broke our video. And we can now see it's around uh, um, of the total pie around 15%. And indeed, it's so much um, that if we look into display, about one third of display is now video and the growth is steady. Um, we're seeing growth around 36% in 2017, 30% in 2018, and now we're 29%, so growth is steady. Remarkably, we saw in recent years a shift from in-stream to outstream growth, where in-stream growth was going lower, um, lower double-digit and um, in-stream growth was growing lower double-digit and outstream growth actually um, 30, 38, 45%. And we're now seeing a slight leveling of that growth where these um, two types of video are coming closer together again. Um, so this is something we're going to release in our final report as well. A quick focus on social. We can see that um, social um, as a share of display around gained four percentage points annually between 2017 and 2019. We revised those figures slightly due to the data from the IABs. So it is um, not near half yet, but um, it will probably exceed um, exceed the rest of display um, in 2020. So zooming in, we can see the non-social display market. If we look if we look at this waterfall, we can see that the non-social display market is around 24% uh, um, of the total of 15.6 billion. And this is, for instance, where programmatic, where other types of video, um, huge growth areas are taking place. What is remarkable, though, that um, many were talking about the dominance of social in recent years. And yes, it is continuing to grow, growing faster, but we're actually seeing an acceleration of growth in the non-social part, again, for the second year in a row. But if we look at video and mobile, no changes here. We see um, non-video display is growing below average, and there's no growth at all left in desktop display growing below inflation. Lastly, on the evolution of addicts, we haven't included yet audio figures in this study, but we, but what we did based on local IAB estimates, a first pan-European um, sizing of the audio market, and we're striving to capture in future editions um, further emerging formats, connected TV, for instance, and others. We're gonna break our video further and also gonna combine the ADEX study that we have here and our programmatic study, which is usually launched separately at the Mexico for a more comprehensive picture. Now, with that in mind, the key question for us actually is, what is going to happen in 2020? So this outlook is probably one of the hardest forecasting jobs that I as an analyst with my, you know, in my 13 years crunching advertising numbers have done because the volatility is so high, uncertainty is so high. So here is, based on company reports, based on interviews, um, based on e economic modeling, a first attempt to quantify the impact of COVID-19, which will also serve as the basis for our panel after this presentation. So there are different approaches, how we can forecast ad spend. Macro modeling, we can look at how different ad spend sectors are impacted. We can look at surveys or analyze financials filings. All of these things come with pros and cons, um, but it makes a lot of sense for us to look at the macroeconomic environment. To not take it, of course, as gospel, as the correlation between ad spend and macro um, is quite complex on second thought, but it helps us to understand which direction we are going and put some signposts in. And that's what we have done, also combining that with some financial filings and also some industry service as well. So first of all, bearing in mind, ad spend trends amplify economic trends. We saw that in the 2009 recession, and we're going to see that again. So if the economy is going to decline by um, 5%, it's going, to, it's, it's going to decline even more. That's something to bear in mind, um, which will impact how 2020 is going to look like. Now, a huge problem with these things is that um, economic uncertainty is on the highest ever level. So the Global Economic Policy Uncertainty Index shows, um, do economists agree do commentators, expert commentators, agree on where the economy is heading? So this doesn't show how bad the economy is, but is there a consensus? And there is, there has never been as little consensus as right now. And we can see that if we look at the different economic forecasts that an IMF, um, a 
um, local institutes, Deloitte and others are putting out, they're quite different, which means we have a huge range of impact scenarios for advertising as well. Now, if we just take the um, IMF data, um, the baseline scenario looks fairly gloomy. Um, and if we model that with an, with an econometric model, we can see that we're kind of bound for the greatest ad spend decline since the Great Recession in the 1930s. If we would take a more pessimistic Deloitte GDP forecast, again, the best case scenario, we'd see further amplification of ad spend decline, and it could actually, this is the US here, the worst recession could be the worst recession in the, in the recorded history of advertising. Now, these are gloomy figures, but we can't just necessarily compare what's happening in 2020 to what's happening or, or what has happened in all other recessions. So there's a limit to just looking purely at macroeconomic factors. For instance, look at this. Um, in contrast to previous recessions, we saw um, not a gradual, but a sudden decline of the market. It was de facto a market collapse. The market just stopped working. And you can see this wonderfully here from a French study from the French Advertiser Association, which looks at the first quarter of different media and then looks at actually the March impact. So um, we saw it across the markets, Jan, Feb were positive, um, going strong. And then it was the second half of March actually where things just stopped. Um, interestingly for digital, it means often it was impacted more quickly and more severely than other media because there are often less advanced commitments. So impacts are more immediate. Good news is that um, they can also, digital can also, so digital formats can rebound more quickly than other media. A key thing to factor in is not just the economic factors, but also how government's responding. A great tool for that is the government response stringency index, which looks at how severe is the government response, not just lockdown, but other measures. And you can see here, we compared April 1st, a date where um, we had lockdown in all markets, and May 11th, the latest date we have for all markets in common, and we can see some easing of government stringency responses, which also means often an opening up of commerce and a rebound of um, consumer activity, which helps to understand which markets are going to be affected longer and which are shorter. For instance, if you look at open table booking data for Germany, you can see that we really had a, uh, we are actually seeing a V-shaped recovery in terms of restaurant bookings, which are exactly at the same level they were at the, at the beginning of March before the pandemic hit. And that is encouraging news for some ad sectors at least to also just bounce back in spending. With that in mind, here's our first outlook for the total 2020 ad market across all media. Looking at the, taking the IMF economic data as a foundation and also looking at other factors like the government response stringency index to understand what's going on. And you can see this differential impact across Europe, but most markets will be down double digit. The good news about this is our May forecast is better than our April forecast. We initially assumed um, in Europe a decline that was around three to four percentage points stronger. We had extremely positive Q1 signals from company reports, from ad tech companies, from platform companies and others. And that allowed us to actually reduce our impact for digital advertising from double digit to actually a single digit decline. We still believe Europe is going to be more severely impacted than um, other regions. Um, and this often doesn't shine through in its global aggregate numbers in company reports. So those might be slightly more positive on, than what you see here. But overall, this puts us also on a great and faster path for recovery in 2020, in 2021. So it is digital, the better performance of digital that expected that's driving this more favorable outlook. What are the factors behind this? Let's park that for now and dive into that during the panel that's going to follow in a, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes. What are the key factors behind this improved outlook for digital? Why have we changed things? Already mentioned, the better expect, than expected results. And we saw in some forward-looking statements something remarkable. We previously assumed, alongside other commentators, that May and June were trending in line with April that we would not see a single worst month 
but at least two, if not three worst months. So Q2 as the lost quarter in a sense. But it looks like right now, as we're easing into June, that Q2 isn't lost overall, and that as of the third to fourth week of, uh, of April, things had bottomed out. Then they were, as some call it, improving. But you have to read between the lines. Improving doesn't mean growth. It means things are getting less worse on a year-on-year -year basis. This is exactly what's happening. So you can see this lettering effect. If you look at the chart here on the left, where you can see in particular for some of the, well, most scaled and self-serve platforms or so small advertisers, you can see um, a massive easing of conditions um, in, the, in the months of May and June. This brings us to a quarterly impact model for format, um, which looks like this. These are all the formats we showed in uh, the Alex study as well, plus other media. Social already, already returning to growth in uh, Q3. Um, search easing very quickly. Again, growth back in Q4. Video is interesting. We see uh, continued good performance in performance-based video, but brand spend has been grinding to a halt, but it's coming back at some point. And we think that Q4 will see the first return of brand budgets at a larger scale. As CPMs are cheap, and it's important for brands to up their share of voice, and also as production lines and productions are ramping up again, they often can't do that at a go, in particular for uh, at the push of the button, in particular for large brand, brand advertisers. Banner display more impacted, um, and then of course classifiers, job markets, car market, etc., and then other media much more severely impacted. Here you can see how this actually looks like on a monthly basis. Um, a chart that um, um, I already showed a couple of times, um, which really shows how, depending on the format, the impact is less deep and less long. And digital versus, tr versus traditional media, like in 2009, is really the wrong divide here. It is about um, which media or which formats can, attached with data and measurement principles, deliver tangible, measurable ROI right now. So these formats are performing best and will recover most quickly before then the resurgence of brand spend in the fourth quarter. We already saw in our own survey in IV Europe a differential exposure across advertiser verticals. And it's key to monitor how these different verticals are rebounding. As I said already, the opening up restaurants is good news and we see probably market by market Parts of, the, uh, parts of the economy rebounding, particularly now with Greece and Italy opening up for travel and so forth. Um, EasyJet, Ryanair, Eurostar resuming fuller services. So all good news, all good indicators um, for the economy and also has a knock-on effect for ad spend. Critical for us in the digital sector is the health of the small and medium-sized businesses. This is going, going to be essential for the recovery. Because as you can see on this slide here, if you look at the very left, you can see um, the share of ad spent across all media, the big brand, brand advertisers, the big guys, and the small and medium-sized businesses. So SMBs are quite sizable, actually. But then if you zoom in in the middle of this, of this slide, if you zoom into digital, you can see that digital is much more reliant on these SMBs than other media. So it's been critical for the sector, also for government stimuli, to work for the small and medium-sized businesses to thrive throughout this recession. They will be some of the earliest to bounce back because advertising for many of them is actually sits high on the balance sheet. It's a cost balance sheet. It's a cost of doing sales. They have to advertise in order to generate business. They can't stop. If they stop, sales fall silent. In the last two minutes, how does the road to recovery look like? Typically, if we look at previous recessions, and here's some examples of three ones in Europe, the dot-com crash, financial crisis, and then for parts of Europe, the, Euro, the Eurozone crash, it typically takes three years for ad markets to recover to new market highs after the recession. This year's index at, at, at 100. In the middle chart, you can see the Eurozone making some uh, strange contortions to the downside here. This is because, of course, the double whammy of the Eurozone crash, which then hit in 2012. Critical for recovery for us here is, how is this crisis going to change? My conviction is previously it was a supply crisis. Um, mainly companies held back with ad spend precautiously um, and to save money, apart from of course the, the, the travel and the restaurant sector which collapsed. But a key risk is 
if unemployment continues to surge, and the unemployment figures you see here are actually um, too conservative as it takes a couple of months really to, for these figures for employed for unemployment and actually being unemployed to trickle down um, into the statistics, you will see um, higher numbers. And it could be that we're facing a demand crisis where certain investments are being held back, not just for 2020, but also for longer. And this is critical. How is consumer demand, how is, how is consumer expenditure going to shape up in this recession? And unemployment is a key indicator for that. Good news is we can see some great encouraging lessons of recovery from China. Um, on the left here, you see two charts um, from a company called Edited, which uh, looks at fashion, um, fashion inventory levels of uh, e-commerce retailers. And you could see a, a strong correlation between um, the outbreak of the pandemic and the collapse in new styles being launched. But you can see also, if you look at China at the bottom here, as soon as things we're improving, you could see a rapid return um, to new styles being churned out. So some sectors do a V-shaped recovery, and we can see luxury is an example of that. We can see in China auto, but there's also with auto the fact generally of a kind of growing middle class in China. Um, however, some clients will not be able to recover fully overnight as they've cost saving measures in place and so forth. So there will be a V-shaped recovery for some, but then there will be other letters of the alphabet for others. Um, and we currently do not expect for the entirety of the ad sector a V-shaped recovery. A disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street, if you will. In our baseline scenario, we can see all markets we expect to continue to grow to growth in 2020 and also um, in 2021. But you can see the growth is not enough to recoup all of the losses. And again, we're probably going to face a three-year period for ad markets to recover. Digital will be faster, 12 to 14 months. And here you can see the differential impact if we look at some, um, uh, uh, um, some other data and how digital is going to, re going to recover more quickly and going to return to new market heights actually already end of 2021. Key is understanding different scenarios. So uh, the IMF gives us different scenarios. Um, what if things are worse? And we're going to look at those as well. So to conclude, we can see what I've talked to you about right now is so our baseline scenario, top left. And then if we're a longer outbreak, a new outbreak, or a combination of both, things might, things might be worse. Currently, we have no indication for that, but it's critical to always stay open, to have your models ready, because one thing is certain, nothing's certain. So ad forecasters live dangerously in 2020, and forecast revisions are critical. We need to understand what are the factors, assess, reassess, reforecast. So as IB Europe, we're going to, on a monthly basis, release new assessments of the situation to keep you all informed. And with that, thank you very much. And I'll pass back to Constantine. Thank you very much, Daniel. 